All right. All right. Let's discover the Fourier series for this function, which is actually f of x equals x, which is actually discontinuous because we're actually decomposing its periodic repetition, which experiences discontinuity here and here. Okay, here we go. First, we'll determine A0. Let's try to do as much work as we can in our head and not clutter the board with writing. So what is the integral of x from minus pi to pi? Zero, so we know that. Okay, so there is no constant term because the average of this function is zero. Perfect. Now let's go for a sub n. a sub n, might as well do it here. a sub n is, the, is one over pi times the integral from minus one, excuse me, from minus pi to pi of x, which is my function, times cosine of n x dx. And this equals, I don't think I even need Alex with Wolfram Alpha. Because, tell me what I should say, the integrand, the integrand is an odd function. It's opposite on, on either side of zero. And we're integrating it over, excuse me, a symmetric interval, so this is zero. So there are no cosines. Makes perfect sense. X is an odd function. So when you're representing it as a sum of even and odd functions, there will only be odd functions in there. So that makes perfect sense. So of course it will be just, just a sine series. Just a si series of sines. And B sub n, well this will not be zero equals Now if this was a calculus class, I would ask you to evaluate it. And the technique that you would use? Integration by parts. You will hide this. Well, actually, I'm talking about a Russian technique. Never mind. You Americans do it differently. OK, but we'll do it as, as millennials, which is go to Wolfram Alpha. And I use the word millennial in the best sense of the word. Computer savvy, cutting edge of technology, can answer any question with their cell phone, especially if they have Wolfram Alpha on their cell phone. Now what Wolfram Alpha did not know, even though you could tell it, is that n is an integer. And because n is an integer, this is zero. And cosine pi n, let's think about it. I think we can write a simpler symbol in its place. Because what is cosine of pi? Minus 1. And cosine of 2 pi? And 3 pi? And 4 pi? Sounds to me like minus 1 to the n. Yes. So the answer is that's the coefficient. Let me write down what the answer is then. This is the Fourier series for this function. This is a series that converges very slowly because the coefficients decay very slowly. It's also very important that the sign is alternating. Because if the sign was not alternating, and you evaluated this at, let's say, x equals 1 half, if you plugged in 1 half here. If the sign wasn't alternating, then you might even doubt that this series converges. Because when you have sum of 1 over n, that's a series that diverges. When you take a monotonically decreasing sequence that alternates signs, then convergence is guaranteed. But things here work out quite delicately. The reason why we have convergence here is subtle. But we do have convergence, but it is nevertheless very slow. And when coefficients decay as 1 over n, 
That means that the function is discontinuous in the sense, in the periodic sense. What we'll find out in a moment is if we take this function, which I drew just a moment ago, which if you imagine its periodic continuation is continuous, but not differentiable at a point. In other words, the derivative will be discontinuous, right? You're coming from this end, it's decaying, the derivative, and then you go back up, so it's positive again. So the derivative might kind of look like this. So if that's the kind of function that we're considering, then the coefficients will decay as 1 over n squared. And if we look at a function that's continuous and its derivative is continuous, but the second derivative is, is discontinuous. You might imagine a function that just comes in nice and smooth here, but not smooth enough for the second derivative to be continuous. Its coefficients will decay as 1 over n cubed. And so the rate of decay in the coefficients tells you exactly how continuous your function is. It's a very, very nice aspect of this whole theory. And it also allows you to talk about fractional continuity. For example, if you consider a function whose coefficients decay as 1 over n to 2 and a half, you can say that it has maybe 2 and a half or minus 1 continuous derivatives. So it's very nice how this is kind of a step, well it's nothing but a component space. We're, we've decided that sines and cosines are a basis. So these coefficients represent the components of your function with respect to that basis. So in the component space is in some sense more flexible and insightful than the function space itself. Because you can talk about fractional continuity rates and so forth. So it's quite beautiful. And if the function is perfectly continuous, smooth, in other words, in the periodic sense it is continuous with all of its derivatives, If it's continuous with all of its derivatives, then how will the coefficients behave? Well, in that case, they'll, they'll decay exponentially. You would have e to the n on the bottom or something like that. That's what would happen. And so then it would be a very fast convergence series. So the limitation to the rate of convergence of these series is how fast the coefficients decay. Okay, this completes this maybe one of the most fundamental examples in Fourier series. It's the first one that's usually considered. And what I'm trying to see is whether we can get the Basel formula from here, which is the sum of inverse squares. And I don't think we can. I'm still trying. Okay, we'll try to get it from the next one. Next, let's consider a function like this, okay? Okay. 